this, James? Hello, mate. <laughs> 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 chips, chips with everything. He's Cumbrian. Whoa. You're almost a Scot. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. Liquid gold. Today we are doing a bit of stud work, but not your normal stud work, we're outside. So external stud work. So it's a little bit like you would put a dormer up on a, on a loft conversion. But we're building um, a second story onto an old garage, which was part of the main house. Quite a few years ago, I uh, converted that garage into a gym. So they don't want to be destroying all of this to rebuild it all up in brick. So the engineer's been out. We've dug some uh, inspection holes around the foundations and he's quite happy for us to build a timber frame building on top of what we've got pitch a roof on it, tie it into the main house, yeah, and we're good to go. So he's worked everything out that we need. So this, this stud wall is actually going to be built out of six by twos. The reason is because it's going to have roof loading on it as well, and a proper tile roof. Yeah. So that's got to go in. We've got a few double rafters here and there. So what we've done um, up to this stage is we stripped off the old um, parapet wall that went around, and underneath this, there's actually a lead roof. It would have been lovely to strip that off and take it but we haven't and the reason is it wasn't economical enough to do that i could have stripped it off and carted it all down the scrap yard but currently the lead price is not great secondly if we had a downpour it would erect to the lovely gym there's the labor involved in stripping it all out and removing it sheeting up every day you know if we had a sudden downpour now even though we've got this great caber deck down there's still the possibility that moisture can get into the building somewhere mm. and run downstairs if we stripped all of the the parapet off like i said we made some socket holes in the wall to find out the height of the joists internally oh, okay. on the main house and then we got a level through measured down for our joists to get a height for our wall plate yeah. and then we've bedded a four by three wall plate all the way around the perimeter of this building spot on level with our with our laser joists onto it floor down perfectly flat level floor and we're ready to start building our walls off here so we haven't got to do any other leveling up now which makes our building of our walls super easy and today we're going to do it slightly different to how we often do internally we're going to build it on the floor and then stand it up because you've got the space here basically you've got loads of space to yeah. do it yeah and a nice flat surface to go exactly with. and because um because we can build it flat on the floor we can screw it together from the ends fully in instead of the you know like the tosh nailing diagonally which yeah. is, there's nothing wrong with that no, no. but this way we can get it right in on the ends if there's a slight little twist in the timber it will pull it all pull nice it and tight it's gonna because it's going to be a structural yeah. stud wall yeah can i just ask james what hmm. screws are you going to use for this it's got to be forge fast, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> so this is going to be our, our sole plate. That's our that's our head plate. Um, so I've got them together. So we're going to mark them out and, and strike a, a square line across so that 
the when we put the studs in between, they're nice and equal, mm. spaced out the same. Um, so I'm going to start on this corner here. So my first one's going to go right on the corner there. Mm. Obviously, that's the corner one. The second one, I'm going to come 150 in, which is the thickness of the adjacent wall. Ah, okay, so that goes into it. Yeah, so, so what that means is on the inside, we've got something to fix our plaster wall in on the corner. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. our first one. From the very corner, I've measured out 1180, and that's going to be the edge of my first stud, because I want 1200 to be the centre of that stud there. So I've got a 1200 ball that comes from this corner. Ah, oh, I see. And it lands up on the centre gotcha, of that. Gotcha, yeah. Joist. So I've measured 1180, so I've come 20 mil back to get the centre of that joist, and then 400s back that way. Mm. So mm. It's, it's just easier in my mind to work to a 1200 to start with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I could, because all, all I've done it, in fact, is it, from here I've gone 380, 780, 1180. Okay. But I'm not that clever, so I just <laughs> start that way and yeah. then come back. So, but it just, you know, but once yeah. you're at that point. So, so, is, so this first board that you're going to put in here, this, yeah. th which will be a 1200, yeah. um, that means that that's going to be the wall that starts here, is it? It's the wall that's on the outside of the building. So yeah. From this right, it's going right to the corner. Right to this corner. So where's the so what you put the board in, then you put the other stud against it, do you? No, what I'll do is uh, that's why I've got two. I've got one stud there and one stud there at 150. Yeah. And then when I build that wall, that's going to have another stud there. Yeah, I understand. So they will nail together, but it means that internally I've got a stud there and a stud there, so that'll take that plaster yeah. wall. So right. so so doesn't it start there the 12? Uh, it, on the inter on the inside it does. Yeah, for your plaster board. Yeah. Ah, what you're uh, talking about, the boards, is the OSB. Board. Yes, sir. Oh, no, it's, it's not OSB. Yeah, it's not OSB, it's render carrier boards. I should Got have it. said that. Sorry, so mate, I was, I was looking at plaster boards. Sorry, yeah. you're... So, okay. in fact, that's a good point you made there. So, basically, I'm working this out um, primarily for the render carrier boards on the outside, and the reason is because they're quite expensive. So mm. I don't want any wastage on those. Plaster board, you know, if we've got to cut a foot off and throw that bit Understand, away, yeah. then that's, that's, that's that. But So I'm setting it up primarily for the outside boards yeah. because we don't want any wastage on them. We're still setting all of our studs at 400 centers. Yeah. So what we do internally is we don't start our plaster wall right on this corner. Mm -hmm. We start one stud in, oh, okay. and then we've still got 400 centers and nice. it can still work out Lovely 1200s and yeah. just one cut to fill in at the end. Clever. Okay, I'm with you now. Sorry for being so slow, but it's, no, it's, it's my age. Oh, well, it's just me not explaining it. I'm being too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've measured these out at 12, 80, and I've already done these. So we've got 15, 80, 19, 80. But what you could do is you could cut a 20 mil block, hook it over the end of your timber, yeah, like that, or maybe a little pin in it, just to hold it, so you can still work to your 800, 1200, 1600. Oh, I see. Just okay. so it doesn't get confusing. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I um, understand that one. Yeah. But yeah, so but that's it. So we're aiming for 400 centres. Uh, fortunately, this timber is 4.8 metres long, hmm. so it works in with 400s. I had to trim a bit off the end because we've got a double joist here. It's just over the other side of it, so I've trimmed it back about 40 millimetres. I'm going to finish this section of the stud wall with one stud right on the end, and then I'm going to build this half separately with another stud on the end of that, and they're going to get bolted together. Our 1200 will end up somewhere between those, that double. Mm. So we'll still have plenty and we'll still work 400 centres. This timber, yeah. I see some ropey old timber these days. This, you seem to have hit the jackpot with this timber. What's a, Have you got a special source for it? It's been sitting outside for quite a while, mm. um, at least a month. Has it? Um, and the reason was good. because I knew we've got shortages at the moment of everything. Yeah. Prices of timber's going up. I've already put a price in for this project and I don't want to have to then go back and say, look, you know, timber's gone up 30%. I'm going to need this much more money for the... So I thought I'll get it in early, get it here. I was a bit worried that of it sitting there in all weathers, but it's been strapped up. I've unstra I unstrapped it yesterday, yeah. pulled it up this morning. It's actually it's Looks quite good. good. Yeah, yeah. I get it from um, Arnold Laver. Yeah. Over in uh, in Pearly Way. Oh yeah. Know, yeah. yeah. Um, the people who gave you the hat and the t-shirt. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're, they're pushing for it. They love it. All right. But, <laughs> No, they're, fine. they're great guys down there, they're really helpful, they know their stuff and they seem to always have plenty of stock. Good. I mean, think at the moment, you know, it's a bit touch and go mm. with what they've got, but generally, mm. um, I think they are one of the three biggest importers of timber into the UK. Oh, okay. 
So that's why they seem to yeah. get the lion's share of a lot yeah. of stuff. And just to be clear for our viewers, this is not an advert. They're not no. paying you. you no. You've got nothing, no axe to grind here. No, not just so. a point of information for people. And I'm hoping that by me saying that, they will stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you never know, do you? Giving me more free t-shirts and hats. And... That's it. You get paid like Dulux. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must have a good collection of hats now, James. Uh, it's, it's getting there, yeah. Sometimes I'll measure it all out and then look at it and think, actually, you know, there's a better, more, more efficient way that will help further down the line. Mm. Because there's nothing worse, especially when you kind of plaster all the room out, it's nothing worse than having it all over, you know, low, millions of cuts to the, mm. you know, you just want to make every process from here on as easy as possible. Which is obviously the old saying, measure twice, cut once. I mean, you know, I think every builder would relate to this, that sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you you suddenly had a thought about the job and... yeah. You know, that's the bit the customer's not paying for, isn't it? Your, exactly. think, your thinking time in the middle of the night. Yeah. When you could be having <laughs> sweet dreams. Sweet anything. <laughs> <laughs> Connect those lines up. So we marked out for our soul on our head. Now we're going to cut our studs. They could all be exactly the same size because, like I said earlier, we bedded this plate. We spent a long time on getting it perfectly level. Uh, from one end to the other over just over an eight meter distance. We did it with a mixture of standard level and laser. You know, we wanted it to be spot on. You know, it took a little bit longer than mm. perhaps you would normally spend, but it's now made this process a lot easier because mm. I haven't got to start cutting all the studs. At Shims price. and things like that. Exactly that. The way we're going to work this is, I will um, I'll draw you a little sketch actually. This is going to be our sole plate, yep. like that. Okay. And then we're going to have a stud that comes up. Yeah, that's your six by two. That's it. And then on the top of that, we've got a, a head plate. So that's these two pieces I've marked out. Mm. And then on top of that, because this is going to have ceiling joists and roof loading onto it, I'm then going to put another two 6x2s on their end, like that, mm. which then allows for our ceiling joists to go and sit across on like that. So what I've had to allow for, so I, I, I already know where my the height I need, so the t I think the total was two, hang on, I've got it written down actually, yeah, two, two, four, eight, zero, that's the total I need from the underside of there to the bottom of there. Mm. So I need to, to measure these, I need to take off that distance, that one, and that one, mm. which gives me two, two, four, two. So I've got to cut all of my studs at exactly 2242. Two, yeah. And then I'm going to screw them together for, between these, yeah. these two. Got then it. we're going to stand it up. And then we're going to carry on. And, then you're, going to put, and then you're going to put these two. Then I'm going to do them when Ian's back. Oh, are you? <laughs> Where, where's Ian gone today? He's got a Doncaster. Has he? What for? Uh, In-laws. Really? Yeah, so oh, long dedi trouble. dedicated man. He must like him. <laughs> Mine only live around the corner. I bet, he's go got, I bet he's got his toolkit with him. I bet he's going to have to do a job when he gets here. <laughs> yeah. I bet he's going, oh, I would love to see you in because our door's falling off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you got yourself a new saw, James? Yeah, I have. Lovely. Wow. That's nice, isn't it? And I like the, um, what do they call these, wings? The these? wings, yeah. Yeah. They're brilliant. It's so good. Yeah. Little, um, oh, little, oh, okay. So you can do repeat cuts. Just yeah. You can... It goes longer than that as well, so you can put your that piece up there. Have you got a support leg for that end or not? That doesn't support there. That's, it's, I mean, because I don't think it supports there, right? Yeah, it's not more than half the length of that. Got it. So okay. it will only. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And it's just for measuring. Yeah. But yeah, it's great. It yeah. was uh, good. Yeah, some chap turned up with some plumber turned up with it. Did he? At the job and just. Just. There you go, mate. Did he? Yeah, very kind. Oh, it was you. you uh, no, 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 no. You, you, you wouldn't be suspicious of people like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he keeps walking you around know, filming all the time. There's no, yeah, exactly. There's no free lunch. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. The least, the least that skill builder could do for you, mate. That's oh, good. That's lovely. Oh, right. Much appreciated. It really is. It's great. I've really been enjoying it. Good. I should look after it now. Well, you can't. It's a working tool, mate. You've got to work, haven't you? That's it. When I first started on the building, she would not have walked past without 
cat calls from the buildings like, oh darling, get them out of here. So it's all changed. Yeah, Hope, hopefully it's all changed. Well, good, good job too, you know, poor girls. We used to drive through London. We had an open top builder's truck. Driver and the brickie would be in the front. And then all us oix would be in the back, all sitting out there, lying in the back of the lorry, you know, no seatbelts, nothing like that. No, in those days, <laughs> you just all lay on top of the blooming tools. And um, in the summer, with all these young women out there, and I was going, oh, darling. Obviously now I'm a reconstructed man and I condemn that sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Objectification of women. Yeah. Yeah, completely. James, not a bad afternoon's work. It'll be about 48 minutes if you're a commenter, but you know, <laughs> we do what we can. Oh, I could have done that in half an hour. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, have a good weekend, mate. And you, mate. Cheers, bye. bye.